How are you getting on? You all got a second glass of uh, organic? Second glass of whiskey? Okay, so what I want to do with the second one, uh, I should point out at this point that you don't have to wait for me to taste something before you taste it yourself because we're on a kind of a bit of a tight schedule, I suppose. The other thing I should point out is we poured all the whiskey out over there. If there's any left at the end of your favourite, feel free to grab another glass of it. You know, um, I'm not willing to put it back into the bottle, that would be silly. So with the, um, while you're all having a look at the second glass, um, I want to give you a bit of a, a, a Bruclari history lesson, I suppose. I said we were built in 1881. What's really fascinating about that is that because we were built the first year um, after we could bring barley from the mainland, we were actually the first distillery on Isla where the buildings were built round about the equipment. On the east coast at your Ardbegs and the Froys and Lagavulin distilleries, it worked the other way around. All this, this distillation equipment was crammed into old farm buildings. And what that meant is they have very, very short stills and end up with a very, very oily um, flavour profile. They end up with a very heavy dram that's just not there for breakfast. Um, Brook Laddie, on the other hand, though, because we had the choice, decided to build many tall stills. And what's fascinating about Brook Laddie is that it was built simply to make as much whisky as it possibly could. We took Victorian engineering back then, we didn't have any of the technology we have today, so everything's mechanical basically. Lots of cogs and belts and wheels and whistles and all that kind of stuff. And we set it up so we could distill as quickly as we possibly could at the time. Over the next sort of century though, we had a bit of a checkered history. During every single period of modernisation in the whisky industry, Rick Laddie was shut. <laughs> Every time a pump is installed somewhere else, we weren't working. Every time a computer has been brought in, we haven't been working. When we bought the distillery in 2001, we inherited the working Victorian Museum. <laughs> it's fascinating. If you go there, we will show you our computer. It's a blackboard. <laughs> because everything's so old, the newest thing that we bought at, at the distillery was the mill. The mill at Brickladdy was installed in 1913. So we really are running this old distillery. At the same time, Glenlivet went under a massive expansion in Speyside. So I want to give you both sides of the industry here. Glenlivet, as of December last year, is making 16 million litres of Scotch malt whisky a year. And from the barley coming into that distillery, to the spirit being ready to go into the cask, at no point does a human hand have to touch the process. I don't has anyone seen Terminator? <laughs> <laughs> this is how Skynet started up. They've made the Terminator of distilleries. They make a, 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 an amazingly consistent product, but it lacks the, the, um, the soul, I suppose, and the individuality of the different ships. We've gone the other way. We've inherited a Victorian distillery and decided to run it like a Victorian distillery. Everything is as slow as it possibly can be. It takes at least seven years to mature our product. What's another two days in the distillation process getting it right? So what we think we've done is we've taken the Scotch whisky industry forward into the past. <laughs> okay, we're making a whisky that is, in our opinion, of such a high standard and quality that it's the way they would have made it when the distillery first opened. It's incredible. And what you have in your hands just now is the first real sort of pledge of that quality coming through. The organic 2003 that you're tasting is totally sold out in Scotland. When I got to the Midwest and found out you guys still had bottles of this, I got very, very excited. <laughs> so I will be trying this one for the first time with you guys. I've started at Bricklady after this was released. Um, and what I want to show you with this first whiskey is how to get the most out of a good glass of Scotch whiskey. So how many of you have professionally tasted before? Do you want to take the mic, sir? Uh, okay. <laughs> so what I want to take you through now is the five-step program of enjoying a good glass of Scotch whiskey. It's the five-step program that precedes the Betty Ford 12-step program <laughs> of enjoying too many glasses of good Scotch whiskey. <laughs> You've all got your glass of organic in your hand. Five things to look for. What do you think the first one is? 
the colour of it. So if you hold that up to the light and have a look through the, the, the spirit, it's really red. First thing you'll notice is that everyone else looks really professional. <laughs> <laughs> now, if someone wants to get a shot of everyone doing this, it'll be pretty good. But nine times out of ten, I'll be honest with you, the colour of the whiskey tells you bugger all about what's in the glass. Okay? <laughs> We at Brickladdy do not add any artificial colour to our spirit, so it gives you a bit more of a hint than normal. You see this has got a lovely olive oil green tinge to it. That's because this whiskey has been matured in an American oak cast. American oak gives you that lovely green olive oil colour, and it indicates you're going to get lots of fresh fruits. Apple skins, pear drops, uh, citrus, coconut, vanilla, those kind of aromas. If it had a much dark, darker red colour, it's probably come from a European oak cast, which is more tannic. And that gives you dry fruits. It gives you chocolate, coffee, prunes, raisins, cherries, those kind of uh, aromas. So the colour gives you a hint of what to expect. The other thing you might see is the body of the whiskey. So if you swirl it, you'll get uh, tears forming down the side and legs running down the side of the glass. Some people who've been doing my job longer than have been alive look at the legs and they come back to you with a distillery, an age, a cast type, the name of the person who put it into the cask <laughs> and what they had for breakfast the day before they did that. <laughs> Those people are drunk. <laughs> the only thing this gives you any idea about is the alcoholic content of the spirit. And there's a very easy rule of thumb. The more legs that appear, the more legless you get. Okay? <laughs> Everything you're trying this evening is 46% alcohol, so don't expect too much of a variation in the legs. The most important part of a whiskey is the smell. So have a sniff. Feel free to shout out any aromas that come to mind. If you can smell gin, you've picked up the wrong glass. <laughs> How's that smelling for uh, anyone? Anyone want to shout anything out? Slightly grassy. Grassy? Yeah, lots and lots of the barley coming through here. Uh, grassy. I, I get uh, kind of popcorn coming from it as well. Lovely sweetness to it. Now on to everyone's favourite part, which is the flavour of a whiskey. It's bringing the sense of taste together with that sense of smell and marrying the effect of the two of them together with that lovely sense of alcohol. So the toast in Scotland is Slanzibar. So Slanzibar, everyone. Have a sip. Let us know what you think. That is gorgeous.